Hi, it's Graham Cox here, co-founder of OptiSurface, and we have a client in Kansas who wanted us to analyze a field just to demonstrate the benefits of OptiSurface and uh, the analysis. So this image you can see here is actually the satellite image from 27th of September 2018, so just as they're about to harvest corn, I believe. And you can see the brown areas are low biomass, and blue are a higher biomass. So there's some low, lower yielding areas here, and on the edges it appears to be lower yielding. Uh, that may be due to slope, I think, um, but we'll take a look at that. If we look at the the raw satellite, us uh, yeah, the, the raw satellite image, as in uh, aerial photograph, we can see water has been lying in these areas here and some has been lying through here there's a bit of a, a cross shaped pattern here maybe and you can also see there's some type of pattern horizontally uh, either from historical plowing or maybe the traffic direction but you can see there that those depression ponded areas line up relatively well with the satellite image so this client surveyed this field with RTK GPS and this is the resulting elevation map. Uh, the color bands are 0.3 of a foot apart and inside each color band there's 10 contour lines that are 0.03 of a foot. So it's a low sloping field with only 2 foot of fall in 800 feet. It's only 15 acres this field so it's quite small. So what we can do is analyze the topography with our drainage analysis which basically just fills up the depressions with water and shows the flow paths so you can see here these that's the depression based on the, the elevation survey and there's another depression there but there's no depression up here where we saw a, a lower yielding area and this area isn't as big as you know, the, the yield nor is this really so there's something else going on here although we are starting the brown area is up to 0.02 of a foot, which is very small. You know, one inch is only 0.08 of a foot. So I'm surprised how small the ponding depth is here, considering the satellite image that shows the yield has been reduced quite a bit. And the also the, uh, let's have a look. So this, this image that shows the yields have been reduced quite highly in these areas and this area here. So these are, you know, these are showing worse uh, than the survey. So one thing, we may not have enough points in the survey to fully pick up the ridges that may be restricting surface drainage. The next thing we can do with our drainage analysis is actually look at how traffic direction may, or furrows may affect the drainage. So this analysis assumes that the, the surface is, is flat um, between the survey points but we have seen with on relatively low sloping fields like this even tiny ridges from left by the planter or machinery traffic uh, of only say you know an inch high can cause problems so what we've done with this analysis here is simulated okay we're gonna if we're farming east west and we have furrows left by the planter uh, of only one inch high or even wheel traffic um, of one inch high then this would be the the uh, the ponding map so you can see that it, it increases because water that would normally flow say in this direction here has to actually build up between the furrows before it can exit and that's why you get the depth here so it's building up you know, one inch high, and then it flows out to overtop the the uh, these little mini furrows. So that kind of explains a bit more of of the problem we're seeing, I guess, uh, in terms of that yield map. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe the furrows are, are even higher than one inch. We've simulated one inch high furrows on this field where the the natural slope is in this direction, and the slope is very low we would recommend farming north-south to try and minimize this 
this problem. So we can actually simulate that of farming north-south. So now the water kind of runs in the direction of the, the traffic direction. Um, but we've still got problems here. And in fact, this kind of possibly highlights more closely what the yield map's showing. So um, I'm not sure if they farmed north-south or east-west on this field. Uh, but you can see this water is actually, yeah, it has to build up here and then jump across to here before it can get out. And that's why there's some water ponding there as well. Same thing. So having said that change the traffic direction may solve a significant amount of these problems, uh, this analysis uh, shows it probably doesn't. So the solution would be to do some some earthworks and drain this field uh, better and we'll look at that now so this is a proposed design so it's proposed elevation and we've done what we call a opti surface one-way design so we've we've forced it to drain in this direction meaning that's one-way drainage so uh, you know, you may want the, the water to meander off the field, um, but in this case, we've got we've got downslope along every north-south run here. Sorry, south to north run effectively. So there's always it's always falling in this direction. That means if you farm in this direction you, and you do build up some some minor mini mounds, only one inch high the water will still flow beside them off the field to this drain which is down this end of the field. Uh, that's just so some arrows on it to show you the, the direction and then there'd be no ponding. So the, the drainage analysis has been done here again on this proposed topography with one inch high furrows and you can see there's no water standing anymore, it's all flowing off. Okay, this would be the cut fill map that would uh, be required to produce that proposed surface. Cut meaning we have to cut soil from these red and uh, yellow areas and drop them in the blue and purple areas. Uh, and it doesn't look like it matches up. It looks like there's more cut than fill. Uh, when there there generally is, you have to cut about 20% more soil than you have to fill just because there's a there's a compaction that happens with the filling. But there would be some also in this green area. It's it's uh, um, within plus and minus half an inch of fill. So there's a bit of there's probably a bit of filling in there that you can't see as well in the green areas. But that the soils uh, the earthworks balances in there, so these cut uh, matches the fill. And you can see the main problem we've got in this field is actually this ridge here that's preventing water from flowing out here to this drain. So by removing that, you can, um, and, and putting fill in specific areas, you can make this field drain nicely. Now you could cut ditches if you wished instead of doing landforming. So we call landforming when we shape the whole field to a surface uh, and I call ditching is where you you know you cut to find ditches through the field problem with ditches is that they can they can um, they can be deep and 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 be a hassle for machinery to traverse uh, they can also uh, silt up over time and uh, require maintenance and if you cut ditches, you've also got the problem of when you traffic across that ditch, particularly if it's it's a bit wet, you build up a you know a, a bit of a mound on the each side of the traffic wheel traffic, and that can hold water up in the ditch further. So that's why, especially on on relatively flat fields like this, it's very cost effective to do landforming rather than trying to ditch this field. And you get a far better result, in um, our opinion. We do have some fields where 
you have to combine ditching with landforming to get a satisfactory result. But for this field, with very little earthworks, you can uh, you can make this field uh, drain nicely. And this is what the slope map looks like in the main slope direction. So this is the main slope is the direction you're trying to make it drain. So there's some high spots here. It actually gets up to 0.8% here. This is relatively low, down around 0.1% slope. Uh, this is a cross slope map, just the same thing except the slope in this east-west direction. So it's relatively high here. You can see that's some high spots. And those higher slopes may be limiting yield as well because they, they the water runs off, off them more and that's why the yield map or the satellite image showed lower yielding around the edge. I suspect that's possibly due to the higher slopes, maybe because soil's been uh, dropped on the edge, possibly, and that's uh, that water runs off that area uh, and it doesn't infiltrate, so you lose yield. So that's another benefit of landforming. You actually you can smooth out those steeper slopes and get uh, more uniform infiltration and higher yield. Okay, this is a long section down the northern end of the field, or the lower end of the field, and you can see the the red lines the existing topography. So th this is a drain down this side here. So we have got enough fall to drain this out. This purple line is proposed topography. Now you can see it's slightly higher in the middle here. So you'd have to cut a drain um, you know, lower than the finished field level just to get that water to drain to this point here. You'd probably start the drain at this elevation and come back to this elevation, which would be foot over 780 feet so about 0.1% slope which is which is a nice slope for drain. Now this is our landform design report so it tells you based on that design uh, what slopes we'll put in. So this is 0.067 minimum slope, main slope, maximum 1% um, a smoothing factor of uh, 200 uh, and cross slope minus 1 plus 1, 200 uh, and for this 15 acre field, the earthworks are very low at only 53 cubic yards per acre. That is as little as you can get effectively. That is so small. It's less than half an inch of cut over that whole field on average. Some areas are, are larger like you saw in the cut film map, but my, on average it's, it's less than half an inch of cut over the whole field and half an inch of fill. Now the cost to do this, because it's such a small job, it, you know, the, a, a contractor is going to charge you a significant amount of money just to mobilise his equipment and come here and do it. But if you had your own equipment or you had a large area that the contractor was coming for, you could typically get 53 cubic yards per acre moved for around $100 to $200 per acre. So over 15 acres, that's 1500 to $3,000 to do the landforming. And if you did it yourself, it would be the lower side of that. So this is a yield. I think the yields in, in that area would definitely be probably zero. That's probably zero. That's probably zero. If you added those the yield loss in those areas, I think for this one year, they would add up to you know 1500 to $3,000. Now in landforming, we'll fix it almost permanently, although touching it up, every five years can have benefits. This is what we typically see in most fields is that the cost of doing the landforming can typically pay for itself in one year and then after that it's pure profit. That's why we and many of our clients feel that OptiSurfacing their field is the highest return on investment activity that you can do on your field. And this ignores the benefits, the other benefits that you get from having a well-drained field of getting onto it in a more timely fashion to plant, spray and harvest. Not having to maintain ditches and, and get bogged in them and, and, and damage machinery. Not having to worry about breakouts of fungi, and disease because your low spots are harboring those problems and getting more uniform infiltration by having smoother slopes they are all bonuses on top 
Okay, so I just wanted to finish off by saying that is the field here that we just analysed, and this is the surrounding area. And you can see from the, the map here that a lot of these fields have similar problems, worse problems, and they've probably tried to ditch them previously with some success, but most of this area would have a high return on investment from landforming. So a farmer in this area should buy the equipment and do his own farm and then offer contracting services to his neighbours. Or we even have clients around the world who see the benefits of OptiSurface way before their neighbours do and then they end up buying their neighbours out because they can see the increase in, in yield and farmland values that OptiSurface can offer them. And with only a, you know investment of a couple hundred dollars per acre, they can increase the, the value of that land by many fold more than that. So if you're interested to know more, please have a look at our free training on our website, optiservice.com, or email us at support at optiservice.com, or give us a call on our numbers, which are on our website up the top right. There's some numbers depending on where you are in the world, and we'd be happy to, to discuss your needs.